Okay, in this video what we're going to do is to start looking at some of the key schools of thought in psychology. Uh, we'll start looking at the psychodynamic uh, principles, so thinking about uh, the ideas of people such as Sigmund Freud, this is someone who uh, the vast majority of people who have had any kind of basic education in psychology will know about. Uh, so Sigmund Freud was a uh, physician, he was a neurologist uh, based in Vienna um, and his specialty was looking at things like aphasia, so uh, kind of difficulties that people have with uh, speech and language and why people maybe don't communicate in a particular way or they kind of have this fixation where they can't uh, speak for some uh, reason. Now Freud um, started to attribute uh, psychological difficulties to uh, ideas related to the unconscious. Uh, so his basic idea, or his kind of big idea, was that unconscious processes and our unconscious instincts shape our personality, our well-being, our behaviours, our thoughts, our feelings, our entire experience is shaped by unconscious processes. Um, just to give you a flavour of some of the types of things that Freud was really kind of pivotal in developing, uh, firstly, the psychosexual stages of uh, human development. So he had this idea that, uh, that children's development and, and people's development in general um, follows through a series of psychosexual stages. So the oral, the anal, the phallic, the latent and the genital phases of psychosexual development. And what he suggested was that in each of these different uh, stages of development, there was a, uh, a fixation or an important aspect of the body which is known as the erogenous zone um, and that was the most important part of the body for that individual within uh, that given stage of development. And you can get fixated at different uh, stages of psychosexual development and fixation at different stages will result in different personality traits from being, uh, being demonstrated and this is something that uh, you can read about in more detail um, in some of Freud's uh, work. Other examples of big ideas that Freud had was uh, firstly uh, Freudian slips. So most people will have heard of Freudian slips, so the idea that you say something that you don't necessarily mean. Um, what Freud suggested was that uh, these are uh, manifestations of your unconscious mind uh, making itself conscious. So instead of saying something that you think you're about to say, you'll say something unexpected and that would be a manifestation of what you truly mean um, from your unconscious. And then we have uh, on the right hand side here an example of a pictorial display of the Oedipus complex. So this is an idea um, again thinking about child development where uh, people begin to or children begin to desire the opposite sex parent. So uh, it may be that uh, little boys become fixated on their mothers and little girls become fixated on their, uh, their fathers. Um, this is where you get kind of uh, stereotypes about kind of mummy's boys and daddy's girls. Um, and what this, um, what this complex or what this fixation starts to initiate is some kind of behavioral modeling in uh, children of the same sex parent, because obviously the, the same sex parent has been able to attract the opposite sex parent. Um, so what the child begins to do is to model the behavior of the same sex parent almost to kind of learn how to become um, a functioning member of that sex. Now obviously these ideas are um, incredibly historical, they don't take into account uh, maybe homosexual um, sexual interests, they don't take into account um, anything that we might ordinarily see as being um, socially acceptable uh, views about uh, child development but these are important um, and actually still quite um, still quite influential theories um, of child development. Uh, perhaps uh, the biggest contribution of psychodynamic uh, theory to psychology is the idea that uh, the mind operates almost like an iceberg. So you have kind of all of the unconscious stuff that people are experiencing below the level of the water and then you have the conscious um, experience. So you have consciousness itself um, above the waterline. Now what Freud did was he uh, divided up the mind again into three parts, similar to what Plato and Aristotle did. Um, what he suggested was that the id uh, forms the kind of bedrock of the unconscious mind. Now the id is uh, kind of based around our core desires and instincts. They're typically uh, related to sexual instincts or aggressive drives and it's really driven by the pleasure principle. So this idea that the id is all about getting what it wants. It wants, to, uh, it wants to express itself aggressively, it's looking for kind of sexual stimulation, um, 
and it's all about that kind of seeking out of pleasure it wants to be uh, gratified at all times now the flip side of that is the superego the superego acts as um, a person's conscience or a sense of morality um, it represents what someone might view as their ideal self their most virtuous uh, most virtuous identity that they can have um, and what it does is it punishes the it. So for example, if someone has a particular sexual interest, the superego may not agree with that sexual interest um, and therefore it will punish the id with a feeling such as shame, for example. Now, the way that I'm describing this um, almost feels like it's giving some kind of um, agency to each of these aspects of the mind. Now, these aren't kind of individual kind of homunculi within the mind. So a homunculus is this kind of uh, this kind of metaphorical being within someone's mind that drives their behavior. They don't operate in that kind of way. Um, it's more about the relationship between maybe morality and kind of core instincts. Um, at the level of consciousness though, you have um, the aspect of the mind called the ego. So this really goes back to what Aristotle was saying about the mind. You, you have this idea of reason and rationality. Uh, what the ego is said to do is to kind of uh, marry up what the id wants with what the superego wants and kind of mediate that relationship, mediate those conflicts within the uh, social environment that is reality. Um, and that's how those three aspects of the mind uh, kind of work together. Um, another influential um, psychodynamic theorist was Carl Jung. So he worked quite closely with Freud um, for a lot of his career, but they did have a falling out um, midway through that. Um, now what Jung's uh, ideas were, were typically based around was archetypes and archetypal thinking. Um, so an archetype essentially is an image or a theme that is universal um, among different people and it provides a shared meaning that again is expressed and experienced universally. So there are many different types of archetypes or many different clusters of archetypes uh, that are described within the psychodynamic literature. Um, Jung tended to focus on, on four of them. So firstly, the persona. This is the, uh, the outward show of conformity. This is our external mask, if you like. Um, there's also the animus, and this is our um, unconscious sense of the opposite sex. So for example, um, a male will have an, an anima that is related to uh, their sense of the ideal female, for example. Uh, we also have the shadow, and this is the darkest kind of sense of ourselves. So this may be applicable or comparable to the, the Freudian id, for example. Um, this is kind of our core instincts, our aggressive drives, our aggressive potential. Um, and then we have the self, and this is our, again, ideal unified identity, where we take into account not just what society thinks we should be in terms of our persona, um, but we also try to integrate the animus or the anima and the shadow to have a holistic view of who we actually are at our core. And essentially what this means is that if you have poor integration of different aspects of yourself, then you have uh, poor behavioral outcomes. And this is exactly along the lines of what Freud was suggesting uh, with kind of poor uh, integration of unconscious drives leading to uh, negative mental health outcomes. Uh, this is just a picture of how uh, young began to uh, understand archetypes and how they interact with um, with each other and how they lead to a view of ourselves. Um, an important idea that relates to this is the idea that these archetypes are universal. So for example, uh, the shadow or the animus or anima, these are universally shared ideals of uh, men and women, for example. And what they do is they guide our understanding of the types of people that we might look up to or respect. So uh, Jung said that from the unconscious there emanate determining influences which independently of tradition guarantee in every single individual a similarity or even a sameness of experience. Now what this means is that these um, archetypes are universal images. It doesn't matter what tradition you come from, what background you come from, what religious uh, sect or what religious group you come from, you'll be able to recognize the themes within these archetypes. And there's some uh, quite influential thinkers who have begun to map different archetypes in biblical stories or in uh, screenplays or in books. So Jordan Peterson is someone who uh, 
um, is quite controversial um, at the moment, but he's done a lot of work thinking about how um, archetypes are represented in both modern and classical literature. Now, in terms of how uh, psychodynamic principles are embedded within modern psychology, um, we have uh, psychoanalysis as a treatment for mental health conditions. Now, the basic thought behind this is that um, in order to address the, the drives of our id, we come up with various defense mechanisms. So it might be that we repress unwanted sexual desires or we deny that we have um, particular aggressive thoughts or we might project our id's uh, desires and instincts onto somebody else. Now these defense mechanisms can be mature in that they uh, recognize that maybe what we're trying to do isn't rational and they work quite well with uh, the superego and the id. Or they can be immature in that they overpunish or underpunish the uh, instincts of the id. Now if they are immature, then what psychoanalysis does is it tries to mature those defense mechanisms. Now it does that in a particular way. So it does it by uh, bringing unconscious battles and unconscious conflicts into the conscious realm. It does this by uh, things like free association. So you might get a, a bunch of different words that are uh, said to you by a, a psychoanalyst and it's your role as a, as a person undergoing that kind of therapy to just freely associate, freely talk about what things come to mind uh, when you think about particular topics or people or environments or, or contexts. And what that does, by, because it is a free association task, you can talk about whatever comes to your mind. And typically if you're responding quickly and instinctually, then your unconscious thoughts become uh, more conscious. Another way that uh, psychoanalysis anal analysts work is through uh, dream analysis. So thinking about what happens in your dreams, you might uh, keep dream diaries, for example, um, what is said to be uh, manifest in your dreams is a projection or a representation of what's going on in your unconscious mind. So uh, a psychoanalyst uh, may also engage in dream analysis to un uncover uh, what's going on in terms of the unconscious conflicts that you're experiencing. Now thinking about the, the status of psychodynamic uh, principles today, um, they are largely unsupported and this is because um, Freud and Jung and, and many psychoanalysts rely on the process and the, the, the uh, approach of introspection. So they ask people to just report what they're experiencing. Now this typically can lead to a lack of observable outcomes. So you can't measure whether somebody's introspective account of how they're experiencing consciousness or how they're experiencing an unconscious battle um, is actually a true reflection of what's going on or if that's just the way that they've constructed their experience. Um, now that said, there is an overlap with unconscious or implicit cognition. So uh, kind of Freud's ideas of the unconscious driving our behavior. Um, although it does seem to get some criticism from a lot of behavioral or cognitive psychologists, um, does form the basis of um, some of our modern thinking about how our mind works. So it might be that we have this distinction between automatic cognition or implicit cognition and deliberative cognition, so system one and system two in Daniel Kahneman's work. Um, and that's something that I'd really encourage you to go and look at, particularly Seymour Epstein's uh, rational experiential self theory. Um, and what this is uh, essentially getting at is there is a distinction within our minds of the maybe intuitive or automatic processes of mind and the more deliberative or rational aspects. Again, mapping onto what people like Plato and Aristotle were saying.